If you believe in God, you believe in angels. Those are real angels? So you see angels in the book of Genesis, the book of Exodus, all the way to the book of Revelation. Angels are present in the life of Christ, but many people are not aware that in the science of angelology, that is the study of angels, theologians from the very first centuries all the way up until now have identified nine layers of angels, nine choirs, nine levels. And today we're going to walk through those nine theological distinctions of the angels using St. Thomas Aquinas and the Church Fathers, I'm also going to give you the Bible verses, so let's get into it. The number one level at the tip, tip, top of all angels are the seraphim. Seraphim in Hebrew means the burning ones. Why are they burning? Because they are so close to God. The divine love catches them on eternal fire. They are burning with the love of God, and they are associated with contemplating the divine presence. Where do we see the seraphim in the Bible? Chiefly, the prophet Isaiah. In chapter 6, he sees these celestial beings so close to God, they have six wings for their eyes to fly and to cover their feet as a sign of humility. This is probably an allegory. Obviously, angels don't have bodies. They don't have wings. They don't have eyes. We are seeing that these are the angels attending to the divine presence. They are the burning ones. They are the seraphim. Number two, the next level down on the hierarchy of angels are the cherubim. Now, you probably think of cherubim as fat, naked babies, and that is completely wrong. Cherubs don't mean fat baby. Cherub, literally in the Hebrew, is related to a word meaning one that is ridden upon like carrying a chariot. These cherubim, the level two, are associated with knowledge, wisdom, and they are the ones in the book of Genesis that guard the tree of life. When Adam and Eve sin and are cast out of the garden, it is the cherubim with swords of fire, the primitive lightsaber, that guard the tree of life, that guard paradise from humanity. And because of this, in the book of Exodus and the rest of the Old Testament, we see that in the Holy of Holies, the tabernacle, and later in the temple, the veil that partitions off the Holy of Holies from the holy place and temple has cherubim on it. And the Ark of the Covenant has two statues. A lot of people were against statues in church. Statues were in the Old Testament. Right there at the Ark of the Covenant, there are two cherubim protecting the divine presence with the Ark of the Covenant in the Holy of Holies. So the cherubim are the protectors. Level three in the angelic hierarchy, according to St. Thomas Aquinas and others like Dionysius the Areopagite and Gregory the Great, are the thrones. Now you might think to yourself, that's a pretty weird name for a class of angels, the thrones. But the thrones are there to radiate God's authority and justice downward into the rest of the angelic hierarchy. Thrones, again, a strange term, is found in passages like Daniel chapter 7 and also the book of Revelation chapter 4. The angelic thrones are those in the court of God who are bringing honor and authority from God to the lower levels of angels and then from the lower level of angels to the human species on earth. The fourth level in the angelic hierarchy are the angels called dominions. Again, an odd term, but dominions have a role in supervising all the lower angels. You could think of them as the managers in the angelic hierarchy. Did you see the memo about this? Dominions is found in sacred scripture. For example, in Colossians chapter 1, verse 16, St. Paul mentions the thrones of and the dominions as referring to the angels. So part of this hierarchy, as you'll see as we go on, is mediating the grace, the glory, the honor, and the teaching from God down through this hierarchy of these nine levels which are depicted in sacred scripture. 
All right, that's four down. We got five more to go on the angelic hierarchy. If you're liking this video, please like it. Please share it on Facebook and please subscribe. This is the Dr. Taylor Marshall podcast. We have over a million subscribers on various channels and millions and millions of views. If you like talking about scripture, philosophy, history, liturgy, anything like that, this is your podcast. Please subscribe and look for more and make sure you hit that bell. Also, this podcast is brought to you by the new St. Thomas Institute, nsti.com. That's where I teach online classes on the Old Testament, the New Testament. If you want to be confident in your theology or you want to take a class on philosophy or Thomas Aquinas, St. Augustine or Mariology or Angelology, sign up at nsti.com, new St. Thomas Institute. You can earn up to 10 different certificates on all of these topics at your own pace at a very low tuition. Check it out, nsti.com. I will be your personal professor. We continue with level five, the virtues. The virtues are the ones that impart blessings to this world, and the virtues are what give us the supernatural miracles in this world. The virtues are mentioned by St. Paul in Romans chapter eight, verse 38. He mentions the virtues and the principalities. We'll come to them in just a moment. But the virtues are the ones that bring miracles to the world and allow prophets, especially in the Old Testament, to work their miracles. God is sending his virtue angels to humans to accomplish these miraculous events. Just below the virtues, we get to the sixth level, and those are the powers. The powers are known for their role in restraining the demons, restraining evil, unclean spirits. The angels called powers are mentioned in Romans 8.38, Ephesians 1.21, and Colossians 1.16. And now we get to the lower triad of angels, all right? This is the last three in the choir of nine. And number seven are the angels called principalities. Principalities are the earthly authorities, guides by which God's providence is manifested in the world. Principalities have the role of overseeing groups of people, for example, nations and institutions, and they are seen as guardians of humanity. The term principalities, as I mentioned before, was in Romans 838 and Ephesians 121. So they're associated with rulership. And now we get to number eight, one you're probably familiar with. The eighth level of angel is that of the archangel. You've heard of archangels. Archangels are normal angels with more power, with ruling power, but they're under the principalities, according to traditional Christian theology. The term archangel appears twice in the New Testament, 1 Thessalonians 4.16 and Jude chapter 1, verse 9. In the Catholic tradition, we recognize three archangels by name, although there are seven archangels. I'll tell you more about that at the end of the video. Those three archangels by name are Michael the archangel, Gabriel the archangel, and Saint Raphael the archangel, who appears in in the book of Tobit. And then last of all, on the ninth level are the angels called just angels. They're just angels. There's no special name. These are the lowest in the hierarchy, according to Dionysius, Gregory the Great, Thomas Aquinas. These are believed to be the guardian angels that each one of us has. By the way, see my video on the guardian angels. And they are the servants of God who are most proximate, most near humans here on earth. They are the angels that are among us, serving as messengers, bringing messages back and forth, and being our direct guides. And we see this, for example, with Abraham in the Old Testament in Genesis chapter 18, with Mary in Luke 1, although you could say, of course, Gabriel is an archangel. And then also all the angels that appear to the shepherds in Luke 2, at the birth of Christ. These are that final level, the ninth level. What's interesting about this is the theologians say that when Satan, Lucifer, fell, there were angels from the various nine levels that fell with Satan. So amongst the demonic horde, you have demons 
who would belong to these nine ranks. And then, of course, they do their malice, they do their wicked, according to their original powers that they had before, but now they use them for evil. If you like this video and you like angels, check out my video on the seven archangels and the end of times. It gives you the various names and powers of the seven archangels. And also check out this video I've done on the Book of Enoch, the Fallen Watcher Angels, and the Nephilim Giants. Thanks for watching. God bless.